In the last video of this course, we are going to see how can we uh, how can we use the Apache Flink windows in order to to generate some uh, some aggregations on the data that has been uh, windowed. So previously, we have seen the how can we use the key by operator to partition the data into several logical and or physical partitions, and then we saw that with the help of the window operator, we can uh, we can uh, additionally partition the data on the partition into uh, splitting the data into uh, windows. And this is an important thing, for example, if we are working with some data that is uh, of time series data, it's an important thing because we can um, we can extract some features that can be later used for machine learning or something else. Uh, so this kind of uh, windowing of the data is a really important concept that exists in, uh, in computer science. Um, so how can we create, uh, we have previously seen that we can create a window on a kid stream, or if we want to, to do windowing on a non kid stream, you, we can use the operator window all. And over here, the window operator expects a, a window uh, assigner. For example, there are some built-in assigners like this one for uh, tumbling event time windows. Uh, we have to specify the length of the window. Because this is a tumbling window, we have only one argument. But if this was a sliding event window, then we should also declare the, the size of the slide. So, for example, slide of 1000 milliseconds and size of uh, 2000 milliseconds. A really important thing when working with um, when working with uh, with windows is to uh, to make sure that all of the data in the data stream has a timestamp assigned. So we at the moment actually just in the sensor data over here, we have the timestamp as a field variable, as an instance variable of the class, but we need to extract that field from our class and we can easily extract it with a get method in order to, um, to add that timestamp to the data stream itself. So for that purpose, over here in the first steps of, uh, of, uh, of our code, after the map operator over here, in this step, I have a data stream of sensor data. And now I will call the assign timestamp and watermarks operator over here. This operator expects a watermark strategy. So new watermark strategy with anonymous class. And over here, um, this create watermark generator method should generate a watermark, should return a watermark generator. So let's try and do that. Yep, here it is. Um, sign timestamps. Let's see what else can we actually overwrite over here. Yeah, we also need the uh, create timestamp assigner to extract the method. Um, so in this step, we will create a return a new timestamp assigner for the sensor data. Yeah, and this is what is one of the most important things. So how are we going to extract the timestamp from the sensor data? The sensor data dot get uh, get timestamp and the timestamp is previously already a uh, a long, uh, a long variable. Over here on each event, this is the, the watermark generator. And this is something, uh, the watermark is actually, uh, Apache Flink supports two kinds of times notation. The one, one time is uh, the ingestion time, the, the processing time, that's the time when the event was received in the stream engine. And the other time is the so-called event time. And that is the event that has been uh, the, the time where the event has been produced. Uh, in our case, um, in our case, we have, um, in our case, our events are in a descending uh, timestamp schedule. So all of them are in, in increasing time, uh, have increasing timestamp than the previous timestamp. So the watermark over here will simply emit it as new watermark of the sensor data dot get uh, timestamp something like this and over here maybe we'll do we'll just do nothing uh, for the purpose of uh, refactoring of the code this is better to be uh, 
this is better to be uh, moved outside somewhere. So I'll create a new package over here, uh, timestamps or assigners, uh, sensor data watermark uh, strategy over here. I'll define a class, sensor data watermark strategy. This will implement the watermark strategy of sensor data. And inside of that, I will just copy whatever I wrote over here. This is actually the body of that class. And it should be all good over here. This can be a Lambda expression as well as I can see, but let's not risk it. Um, so here, instead of having all this, uh, we will just have a new sensor data watermark uh, strategy. So this is really important to extract the timestamp in order for the windowing of the data uh, to work as it uh, to work as it should. Uh, the next thing that we are going to see now, now that the windows are created, so on each partition we are creating those windows. Uh, there are some steps that we can take after the windowing is done. And here are the, those operators. So we can do some kind of aggregation of the data. Uh, we could do it that way, or we could do it with the apply uh, with the apply uh, function. Uh, the apply function, there is one difference between these two. If you like to have access to all of the data that has been set into those windows that were created, then apply is better. Because in that case, you have a iterable collection of all of the data that has fit, that has that was uh, found in a given time window. If you don't care about all of the data that was in the time window, then you can easily uh, use this aggregate uh, function over here. Uh, for the purpose of this exercise, we will use the apply function. And over here, our goal uh, we will definitely define a new new window function, but maybe do it uh, maybe do it in a in a separate uh, way. Um, so let's say let's first define what is the what is the goal of the task. The goal of the task would be, let's say we want to let's say we want to detect an anomaly. Okay, we were we were generating those anomalies before. We were, we were generating the anomalies before in the in the sensor data source function, and let's say that we now we now want to detect them in a given time window. And if we detect the the anomaly in the given time window, that anomaly will be uh, sent uh, in a new data stream. So our result of the apply function over here would be again a data stream of uh, sensor data. But we will call this anomalies stream. This. So we will have to declare here a new window function. New window function, and this will automatically detect. Uh, let's define it first first here as an anonymous class, and then later, if we if the code is way too large, we'll move it into a separate class. Um, so let's go over the, the window function. The window function is a generic uh, functional interface with only one method. The, that method is apply. And it has uh, three, four, actually, sorry, four generic parameters over here. The first one is the type of the input date, sensor date. The second one is the type of the output date. Again, in our use case, it would be sensor data, but it can be anything that you want. It can be an object from a new class. Okay. Um, the third one is string. The string actually represents the type of the key of the partition. So we previously have partitioned the data by sensor type. So therefore, this is that string over here. And lastly, the type of window that we are going to use. As we said, we have actually two types of window. Time window, those are the tumbling, the sliding, and the session window. And we can also have a global window, which is the fourth kind of window that exists in Apache Flink. Uh, regarding the method apply, the arguments are the following. This string S is actually the key, and we will rename it that way. Uh, 
then we have then we have then we have maybe we can actually make this to be like uh maybe it can be out of strings yeah we'll we'll give like a string method so let me like a string uh let's just change this over here okay now it should be good okay so we we will print we will send to a new data stream that would be data stream of strings uh for example how many and which anomalies were detected in a given time window that would be printed out on the screen uh, okay so string key the first argument is the key of the partition so this could have four possible values that would be uh, uh, temperature uh, pressure humidity and co the time window is the details for the window where the data has occurred so the time window will actually uh, the time window uh, we can extract from that object the start and the end of the time window uh, the iterable of sensor data is all of the data that has fitted into that time window and we are already familiar with the concept of collectors from the flat map operator this is where we are going to send the results from this apply uh, function so how are we going to determine the how are we going to determine the the, the the anomalies we are going to determine them with a simple statistical analysis that simple statistical analysis uh, we are going to calculate the interquantile range uh, we are going to calculate the quantiles and after that we can easily uh, easily detect if a given value is an uh, anomaly uh, so for that purpose i'm going to include another dependency in our project and i'll add it in the pom xml over here this dependency will help us uh, to to calculate the the quantiles the, the the first and the third quantile and that would be uh actually there is a newer version let's import that one okay works good let's go back to the code so what we are going to do now is we are going to iterate all of this uh, so for each sensor data in the iterable okay so for each of that uh, we would need this uh, we would need this uh, we are going to create an object of class t digest over here equal to new uh, Tweet digest, yeah, or avail tweet digest. Let's use that. Okay, so this is we're going to use this one in order to calculate the uh, first and the third uh, quantiles. So, um, what we're going to do over here now is we're going to we're going to uh, add all of those elements in the digest, but add their numeric values. So, element dot get value. Okay, and after that we can easily calculate q1 as the digest get quantile so 0 0.25 that would be the first one and the q3 we can get it as digest dot quantile 0 0.75 uh, so the interquartile range will be calculated as Q3 minus Q1. And uh, now we will have to iterate through the data samples again. So let's create a list of sensor data. This would all be the anomalies equal to new array list. So I'm going to iterate all of the window data again. And uh, we are going to uh, check now if the uh, data value, so long value equals to el dot uh, get value. Uh, it's double.
so if this value is larger the value is larger than uh, q3 plus 1.5 the interquantile range or is less than q1 minus 1.5 the interquantile range so this is just a, a elementary a statistical analysis in that case um, we will add the element into the anomalies list and after doing this after doing this we are going to check so if the if the anomalies is not an empty list in that case we should generate uh, some uh, message and send it to this collector so collector dot collect um, let's do it with string format so uh, in the time window from to there where uh, ampersand uh, b anomalies and let's list those anomalies over here we can we can list them like this uh, so first this person d is the start of the time window so time window dot start then we have time window dot end get end the number of anomalies can be uh, extracted from the anomalies dot size and the anomalies we need to concatenate them as a string with uh, with maybe a, a comma between them uh, so let's let's do it that way so anomalies of stream dot map to string so uh, sensor data to string and collectors touch joining with uh, something like this in behind so this is what we are going to send to the collector if we have an anomaly and otherwise we are going to send to the collector string dot format uh, Oh, we also need to include uh, the name of the sensor type or that's the key of the partition in the time in the time window that there were zero anomalies from sensor type that type so that would be here now the key would be printed over here uh, here uh, we are going to if there are no anomalies there were no anomalies for sensor type that type in the time window from then till then uh, so first the key then the time window get start and then the uh, time window get end okay um Yep, this is actually what we want to achieve in this uh, situation. So now after this is done, we will uh, print uh, the anomalies stream. So we'll just call the print operator on it. Uh, yep. Okay, and one more thing that I think we need to check over here, that would be here in the source. Um, think what we need to do over here when we generate the, uh, when we send the timestamp if you remind let's run this quickly actually uh, let's call this over here to be printed so this is a local date time now I think this needs more zeros over here, if I'm not mistaken. Epoch converter. Yep, it needs more, I think definitely needs more zeros. So what we are going to do, actually, we are going to multiply this with uh, 1000 when we are generating the data size. Uh, those are the, 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 actually, this is just in seconds 
epoch seconds. We need it in epoch milliseconds. Let's see if it has epoch mill. No, just epoch seconds. So yeah, we are going to multiply that whole with uh, yep. Yeah. So for example, here it is. Yep, those are the milliseconds over here. Um, so let's go now to the example and let's uh, test it. But also besides testing, like, let's make sure that we really, really have anomalies. So let's go into this first example data, uh, actually this one. And if it is an anomaly, let's make it a bigger. So for sure, it will match in the... In the uh, yeah, so this would be from uh, 50 till uh, 99. Let's make sure that it really, uh, that anomaly gets uh, caught. So this will also still be printed and we will know when an anomaly is generated. And then we can also catch it uh, with this uh, windowing and applying. Uh, so let's go to the first example class and let's run it. let's wait now okay yeah here it is it started already um, so in the time window from uh, there to there there was one anomaly from sensor type temp and the value is 120 here it is so it it got caught for the humidity it declared something with 48 over here There were no for the pressure for okay one anomaly twenty three for temperature yeah so this is actually possible to happen if we don't have a lot of data in that given uh, time window uh, so if we just have that one over there it could be declared as anomaly but for example over here this is a good example so we have uh, the value uh, of the of the pressure actually no that's 102 that's fine uh, carbon monoxide temperature let's take a look there was a nice one this is okay so the temperature is 120 so we could definitely work a bit to on the mats over here 32, 33 for the humidity, this looks okay. Pressure, temperature, 28. Start by temperature, 24, 28, 28. Yeah, this is this is another anomaly one anomaly so 105 for the temperature it got detected yeah so we also have some uh, some things that shouldn't be detected as anomalies but the main uh, point of this exercise is to understand how to process the the data that has been uh, in the in the in the window over here um not sure if we can we can do something like this maybe um if the the window should not even be created so if terrible that size we cannot get it as a size but at the count uh, it should be zero so let's say that if there are less than five values over here we won't even do this at all so so, uh, yeah, let's do it this way. Uh, if count less than five, uh, then we will, we will send to the collector a message. Uh, there is no, uh, there is no sufficient data in the time window. To 
uh, check for anomalies. There's no sufficient data in the time window to check for anomalies for sensor type of S. Just add the necessary information. So time window uh, get start, time window get end, and then we have uh, the P of the partition, lastly. Let's give it a try again and see what will happen. There is no sufficient data. 43 for the humidity over here. That shouldn't be a pressure, temperature. Anomaly was generated somewhere around here. So let's see if this gets caught. Humidity. Pressure 102. Anomaly. Pressure, humidity, yep, so it works for some instances, for some of them, of course, it will, we will get some false positive that is completely normal when uh, a process like anomaly detection is being uh, executed. So just to summarize uh, the most important stuff for uh, from an apply function, uh, from a Windows function that is used in the apply operator, uh, we have access to the key, we have access to the start and the end of the time window, we have access to all of the data that was found in that time window, and also we have access to a collector of a given type that we are going to determine, and that type will be used uh, as the type of the resulting uh, data uh, stream. Uh, thank you for your attention in this course. Uh, feel free to contact me on my email if you have any questions.